as with every other hobby that I'm passionate about. Um, one of the main aspects that helps me drive this hobby forward is the hunger for more. There is always an item where I feel that I can improve it or upgrade it. For astronomy, for example, this can be a better eyepiece or a larger telescope or an equipment piece that would help me um, see more of the night sky. One type of accessory that um, can help deliver measurable differences in terms of the quality of the uh, views uh, are filters. There are quite a few options out there and deciding which one is the right filter for you can be a bit difficult. That's why in today's video we are going to take a deeper look at the more popular categories of astronomical filters and help you decide which one is the right for your setup. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BT Observatory. If you're new to my channel, I like to talk about astronomy equipment. So if you're looking for this type of information, then hit that like button and subscribe. If you already know my videos and like them, but haven't subscribed yet, then maybe consider doing so, so you don't miss out on future content. When deciding to get a new equipment piece, you will most likely go for an item that falls in one of the um, following two categories. On one hand, you have um, items that will fundamentally change your possibilities of uh, observing the night sky. For example, the jump from binoculars to the first telescope or getting your first um, eyepiece with a short focal length for planetary observations. These items will um, give you possibilities to see the night sky in a way you just weren't able to do before. On the other hand, you have um, items that will um, take the existing possibilities and improve them. For example, getting a bellow lens or uh, a better, uh, bigger telescope. A type of accessory that falls in this second category um, of improving your views of the night sky are filters. These work by blocking a certain wavelength of light whilst letting others pass through. This can boost contrast, remove glare or unwanted light reflections and help reveal subtle details that you couldn't see without. The amount of light that gets passed through is defined as transmission rate and is measured in percent. So a filter that blocks 60% of the light has a transmission rate of 40%. Filters come in two standard sizes of 1.25 inch and 2 inches and work by attaching them to the threaded end of your observing eyepiece. Since filters work by blocking some of the light entering a telescope, the views will always lose a bit of brightness when filters are being used. This way, it's recommended that the telescope should have an aperture of at least 4 to 6 inches so it can compensate for the blocked light by the filters. Depending on which views you want to improve, there are different filters to choose from. If observing the moon and the planets of our solar system is your goal, then you might consider an ND filter or a polarizing filter. This will help reduce glare and scattered light. Both are color neutral and work in a similar way. An ND filter or neutral density filter reduces the total amount of light that gets through kind of like a pair of sunglasses. It doesn't block certain wavelengths like other filters do, it just reduces the light intensity. A so-called moon filter is nothing more than an ND filter with a fixed specific transmission rate, typically between 15 and 50%. Similar to ND filters, polarizing filters reduce the light that gets through. However, they do this by selectively letting light waves of certain polarization to pass through. This way, more color information is preserved compared to the ND filters and are considered to be the superior option. Another popular filter type for planetary observations are color filters. 
They work by blocking specific wavelengths of light, enabling you to see planets with less color information but with better contrast. For example, using a light blue filter on Jupiter will bring out the reds in the planet's cloud bands. Or if you use a red filter on Mars, then you might be able to see more surface detail. You can also combine two filters by simply stacking them before attaching them to the eyepiece. This way you can create combinations that can better fit a specific observation situation. In the case of color filters, it's best to just get a set, since these aren't very expensive, and try out for yourself to see which ones you like the most. These color filters also have a standardized labeling system, called Rotten Number System. For example, the blue filter for observing Jupiter that I've mentioned before has a Rotten Number of 80A. Now, if you are interested in improving the views of faint DSOs, then UAC or O3 filters might be what you're looking for. UAC or ultra-high contrast filters work by blocking some orange and yellow light typically responsive for light pollution. This way the contrast between the black of space and the DSO you are observing is improved. These type of filters can yield good results if you are observing from a light polluted area. O3 or Oxygen 3 are narrow band filters that can be used both for DSOs and planetary observations. They pass through just the two doubly ionized oxygen lines, 496 and 501 nanometers wavelength, emitted by diffuse, planetary and extremely faint nebulae. Because it blocks a big chunk of the captured light, it's recommended that a telescope should have an aperture of at least 8 inches in this case. Now that we have a better overview of the more popular filter categories out there, I would like to give you guys a um, better uh, look at two um, astronomical filters that I enjoy very much. First, I want to talk about this one and a quarter inch variable polarizing filter from Omegon. It's a solid built and very helpful filter for observing bright objects like the Moon, Jupiter and Saturn. A variable polarizing filter is essentially two polarizing filters stuck together that can rotate independently from one another, enabling you to adjust the transmission rate as you please. This particular filter allows for a variable transmission rate between 1 and 40%, making it perfect for any planetary observation. It's also very easy to use. You can simply adjust the transmission rate as you wish and then screw it on the observing eyepiece. At 50 euros, it's a bit more expensive than a simple polarizing filter. However, I think that the added flexibility is worth the extra money. The only thing I don't like that much about this filter is that both filter rings are a bit loose. Any accidental touches will result in one of the parts moving from its initial position. This can be inconvenient sometimes. Lastly, I would like to show you guys this UHC filter from Astronomic. It's a one and a quarter inch filter that has offered me some amazing views of the night sky. At first, I was skeptical about so-called light pollution filters, but then I received this UAC filter as a present and got to try it out, and my skepticism got quickly erased. I live in a medium polluted bottle 4 area, and it allowed me to see details in DSOs I just wasn't able to see before. Astronomic is a well-known manufacturer of quality astronomy filters and you can see this straight away when you pick up this one and a quarter inch UAC filter. If you own a telescope with an aperture greater than 6 inches, then you should definitely think about getting this filter. Astronomy filters are helpful little additions to an existing eyepiece collection. Typically they aren't very expensive and can be bought in sets and since they have the potential of offering visible improvements of the views of the night sky through your telescope, I can definitely recommend giving them a try. So this is it for this video about filters. Now I'm curious to see if and what filters do you guys use when you go outside with your telescope? 
let me know in the comments below. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and also subscribe to my channel. If you have questions or feedback, please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys next time.